Coming to you from that once forgotten artery that pulses through the center of the continental United States and into the heart of the Ozarks, Grace Matthews. Looking in from the northern border, our Canadian friend, along with his countrymen, feeling the effects of U.S. political issues, Connor Murphy. Welcome to Dueling Dialogues, episode 190. I'm Connor Murphy here with Grace Matthews. Hi, Grace. How you doing? It's been a while again. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm doing fine, but I don't think this construction's ever going to be over. Yeah, between that I and mean, the bad internet, it's been horrible oh, for us it, to get yeah. together. Yeah. It has. And, um, I really miss it. Yeah, me too. It's it, a, it, it seems <laughs> like something is missing or... Um, I haven't done something, or well, it, you, know, you have that feeling. Like I, I you, think you it's screwed up. I think it's because we get to vent. Yeah, and boy, could we use some venting, right? <laughs> I mean, how stupid! I mean, when you think politics can't get any more stupid, yeah, it does. You bet, and. <laughs> What is the deal? I mean, everybody is breaking the law. Well, and they accuse everybody else of doing it, and they're doing it themselves. Yeah, it, it comes to that double standard. You know, it's okay for the left to do anything they want, but as soon as uh, anybody from the right even breathes, they're down your throat and yelling impeachment. Exactly. And, you know, if a guy should be impeached, then he should be impeached. Okay, but it better be worth it. Yeah, no kidding. Because the way the law is written, high crimes and misdemeanors. Now that gives Congress the ability to impeach someone for jaywalking. (laughs) Okay, because that's a misdemeanor, or you know, a speeding ticket, or you know, you put put your left turn signal on, or having sex with interns. Exactly. <laughs> In some states, believe it or not, they haven't fixed those laws, and it, it's illegal. Yeah, it well, it might even be more than a misdemeanor, and you know, like some place like Alabama. So. <laughs> you know? So I've been pretty wrapped up in the Canadian election here. We're 17 days away from an election. Uh, October 21st is our election. So I've just kind of been seeing impeachment in the news a little bit but uh, my news has been inundated with stuff from Canada and the mudslinging that's going on here so you're going to have to uh, bring me up to speed and what exactly is going on with this new call to impeachment okay well boy you are behind I am Um, well, well it goes back to there's a whistleblower that's not really a whistleblower okay okay that um, the reason he or she, we don't even know if it's a male or a female, or gosh, it could be one of 72 different things, right? <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah. I, now that, to come, to come to think of it, we don't know what it is. Okay? Yeah, exactly. It could be a dog for all I know. You bet. Um, but, so the reason the whistleblower is not really a whistleblower is because this person does not have first-hand knowledge. Oh, wow, okay. Now, forever and ever, okay, in order to be officially referred to as a whistleblower, you had to be there. Right. You had to hear it firsthand. You had to see it. Whatever it might be that you're blowing the whistle on. Okay? Okay. So that's been forever. Until this, not so much of a whistleblower came forward. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So apparently, President Trump had a call with the new Ukrainian president back on late, in late July. Okay. Okay, we give them money because we like to give everybody money. Right. Apparently, it's sort of against the law to have conditions for money. So, which really makes no sense to me because I've always had to do something for money. Yeah, maybe it makes it easier to pay bribes. I don't know. I don't know either. But anyway, we were giving them some money for defense and such. And 
you know, Europe wasn't really doing their part to help Ukraine. I mean, right. Ukraine is a corrupt place. Well, they're they're scared of Putin too. Because well, Putin's standing are, at the border with his arms crossed and tapping his toe, just waiting. Exactly. And these people are devastatingly poor. I mean, the economy is bad. Everything's bad in Ukraine. Except the food. Well, <laughs> you would know better than I do. I know that yes, you I would. Too. Yeah. You know? The yeah. borscht, right? Bor- borscht and uh, borscht. Made, I made some pedishke the other day. Oh, yummy! <laughs> it's uh, yeah. it's basically a bun with the mashed potatoes on the inside, and then you cook it in a frying pan with some cream and green onions and fresh dill, and they are amazing. Oh, yeah, that sounds yeah calorie. Yeah, you can hear a lot of calories. <laughs> yeah, you you can hear your arteries harden when you're eating it. <laughs> yeah, but it does sound good. It's it very good. good. Yeah. I, I remember the days when I could eat crappy food. Well, or well, it's not crappy. It's just um, well, anyway. Well, most of that that food has come from the Ukrainian people being um, oppressed and um, treated. Depressed? Yeah, depressed. Like yeah, well, Prozac oppressed. Yeah, I mean they they they, they, they only. The only thing they have is the ability to grow stuff because they're they're essentially farmland on the steps. And they like right? to grow potatoes. We know that potatoes Lots and cabbage and beets. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Lots of root you know they they've been surviving on this for hundreds of years. You know, um, I hear horror stories from my ancestors coming over and and they came over before the first world war because uh, it was it was intolerable to live there. I think it still is. Yeah, I, I'm, I'd be very interested because my um, my brother and uh, his wife are traveling through Europe and and they're doing Poland and stuff like that. So, can't wait to talk to him when he gets back home. Exactly. Well, apparently they do have a little gas. They, uh. they do have gas. So, um, probably when your ancestors were there, they haven't yet found you know struck oil. Right. So. Right. So anyway, that that's important because that's really the only commodity they have that probably the world wants. <laughs> yeah. Probably they don't care about their beets. But so anyway, President Trump was talking to him and he goes, I'd like a favor. I'd like for you to look into this corruption. That's what he told the, the new president. Okay. And, um, you know, the Bidens. You know, you know we've discussed... Hunter Biden before yeah. on our show. Numerous okay? times. And a year and a half ago, we talked about Peter Schweister's book. Okay. Right. And all the people that were mentioned in it. And, you know, like we said, Peter Schweister has got the stuff. He is a real journalist. He uh, does not fabricate facts. Um um, you're you're kind of hearing some people um, suggest that he might, but the fact of the matter is, he his facts stand up. Right, he's just pre- he, pre- presenting the facts and letting you make your own right. opinion. And 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 you don't even have to just have Peter Schweitzer, because Joe Biden admitted it himself that he held a billion dollars over the head of the Ukrainians to stop looking into the gas company that his son was serving on the board of, making 50000 a month from a very poor country. Oh. Yeah. Now, you got to understand that Hunter is the kind of kid that makes you lose sleep at night. Okay? <laughs> okay. Um, he was in the Navy and and paraphernalia, and I believe some crack or something else besides cocaine. <laughs> and despite the fact that his dad was vice president of the United States, they kicked him out. Okay. Two months after they kick him out, this amazing prodigy of a kid, um, who's not really a kid, gets a job making $50,000 a month for a Ukrainian gas company. Oh, okay. 
Now, this is the same company. His dad ended up threatening, you know, United States financial aid to if they didn't fire um, a prosecutor that was looking into this gas company. Oh. Now, that's a little bit quid pro quo, which seems to be the word of the month because everybody's going around going, quid pro quo. <laughs> I mean, it's like a fun word to say. <laughs> okay. Some people know what it means, others don't. Okay, but it really means pay to play. Right. Okay. Well, so you have this whistleblower that says that a lot of people told him or her that Trump had, you know, thrown a little quid pro quo out there, meaning. I'm not going to give you the aid until you tell me or until you look into the Bidens. Right. And okay. that would be really bad because they all think that Biden's going to be um, his opponent in the 2020 race. Right. Now, I, it, it doesn't matter that Biden is corrupt, broke the law, and the president should have the right to ask any government to yeah. help us solve a crime absolutely especially okay. when it involves the country he's talking and, to and quite frankly i really don't care if he holds the money until they do yeah and guess what most americans don't they right. really don't give a shit except there's the left there's the left <laughs> and there's nancy nancy yeah. nancy nancy she is something else you bet so she declares a formal impeachment proceeding. Now, she does this without taking a vote because she doesn't want her people on the record of saying whether they want it or not because they might not win their elections. Right. Which is really crazy because when they go to subpoena, which may actually happen today, papers, the Trump administration is saying is going to go nanny, nanny, boo, boo. Uh, yeah. You haven't actually taken a vote to so take us to court for these papers. Okay, that's going to slow everything down. Right. Nancy had originally wanted this to be over by Thanksgiving, which is just about as ridiculous. I mean, by Thanksgiving, we are in the first part of October. Right. I mean, what are they going to actually get done by Thanksgiving? They'll barely brush their teeth. Yeah, exactly. I mean... So anyway, and then she bypasses Nadler, who's the head of the Judicial Committee, and gives it to Shifty Schiff. <laughs> oh, he's nice. full of shit. Yeah. Okay? I mean, he's like, you know, what's that song? Liar, liar. Yeah. I mean, that was written about Shifty Schiff. Yeah, well, he's full of shift. <laughs> the, the unfortunate thing is that much like a deposition, and this is just a huge hole in our legal system, you go for a deposition about anything. I mean, it could be, you know, somebody worked on your dryer and it made, it made it explode. And so you've got a civil case because, you know, it exploded. Right. right. And you got to have a deposition. Well, the attorney in there can lie his ass off to you, okay, and to your family. Okay. You can't. You're sworn in. Well, the same thing goes for shifty shit. <laughs> he is lying up there, you know, and, and questioning people. They can't lie. Right. But he can't. Um, I see why it works for cops. Because sometimes you need a lie to get them to tell the truth. Exactly. But once it gets out of the hands of the cops, it's really a weapon. It is certainly a weapon in Congress. Yeah, and discrediting, and, right? Well, you know, look at Congress. They have like a 13% approval rating. Right. So, you know, um, everybody thinks they're worthless or corrupt. Right, right. They are terribly corrupt, and it, it is on both sides of the aisle. We did learn that with Peter Schroeder. Absolutely, yeah. 
And everybody that seems to be really in favor of this impeachment suddenly has Ukrainian ties. <laughs> Shifty ship has. Yeah. He's got ties to a company we're learning now. Nancy Pelosi's son served on a board of a gas company over there also. Oh, interesting. Mitt Romney's nephew or something did. Okay? And then at the same time, you've got Mitch McConnell and his wife's shipping business from China being looked into. Okay? Right. So now, he's going to do whatever Nancy wants him to do. It doesn't matter that he's a Republican. He's a swamp dweller. Does Nancy realize all of this stuff will come out in an impeachment? Does she realize yeah. that? You know, that's why a lot of people think that this is sort of a... A bluff. A bluff to lower his, you know, ability to win the 2020 election. Right. Which we know that nothing has worked in the last four or five years now. Um, I mean, they, I think the approval rating for Trump is at an all-time high at the moment. That's what we see here from I think Canada. It is too. Now we have seen some polls that are just out and out outliers, um, because the the mainstream media definitely wants to get rid of Trump. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so you, you got these polls are crazy, but let's look at things that aren't polls. An astounding number came out yesterday when Trump took office. The average. American family made $60,000 a year. Okay? Okay. That was about $500 higher than it was when um, Baby Bush was in office, GW. Okay? okay? So you took about a long time. That number stayed stagnant. And we're talking about families. Now, a lot of times to get that amount of money, they got two or three people working in the house. Right. Okay? Yesterday, the number moved up to nearly $65,000. Wow. That's $4,000 since Trump took office. Wow. That is He's a big step. He's got everybody in this country that wants to work is working, and we still need more people. Right. For the first time ever, we are, there's a, a big convention, a Made in America convention, and, and, and this convention is not about you put it together in America, but you're really about the, char um, the parts from China. You had to prove that everything, every material was an American material. Right. I mean, he's bringing it home. He has got black people working. He's got Mexican people working. Right. Um, the stock market I mean your 401k has done well how could excuse me how can they run against this yeah I don't uh, I don't get especially, it especially with socialism their hate runs so deep that they're, it's fogging their brains it, it, it is it is and they, they say well he's corrupt well why is it you can't prove it? Because you want to bad enough. Right. I mean, we had the Mueller report. This whistleblower, they are blowing it all to hell. There there was no quid quo pro. Pro right. quo. <laughs> now I'm saying it wrong. Okay, it, it's just not there. Um, you know, like I said, I just said it a minute ago. I'm going to say it again. I, I, I sure as hell believe all the people were giving money to her. You know, by gosh, they need to do something for it. Nobody just hands me money. Yeah, and if there's uh, anything corrupt going on, screwing the Ukrainian people, screwing the United States, uh, we should know about that. I don't get the, damn right we I, I don't get how they're trying to impeach him on this when all he's doing is trying to uncover some possible crimes that have been committed not only well, to Americans to the Ukrainians it, you know here's another side of this okay you've got Durham you've got Barr 
you've got a couple other investigations going on that's going to expose some of these people, like Biden, Biden's family. Some of these other swamp dwellers, are they doing this to detract from what they know is coming? I mean, if you're doing this stuff and Barr and Durham is looking into it, you know. Right. You know. It's going to come out. They've yeah. already got like Mitch McConnell going, well, I'll have to take it to the floor if Nancy wants me to. <laughs> well, yeah, because you've got this China thing going on. And they've already started looking into his wife, Elaine Chow. I mean, you don't make, okay, Mitch has been serving for something like 28 years, right? Right. In the Senate. He makes, right now, he makes the top of what he's ever made, which is like $200,000. Actually, it's a little less than that. Okay, before he became... um, you know, um, earlier he would have made about one hundred and fifty thousand. Let's say, yet he has forty four million now. <laughs> okay, I want the yeah. name of his broker. Yeah, wow. Nancy Baby makes about two twenty four when she's speaker. When she's not a speaker, she makes about one ninety or something. And we know that she kind of goes back and forth. She's worth something like two hundred twenty eight million. Whoa. Okay, what do you think? And do you think Trump let this go? <laughs> do you think he hasn't had people on this since day one? Yeah, that th- this could be interesting. This could be a, either a distraction or a bluff. I think it's a bluff. A lot of people think it's a bluff. I'm not so sure. Because sometimes they are just so stupid. Yeah, well, they they have that, um, you know, we can do anything and get away with it ingrained in them, just like the liberals in Canada. Okay, uh, absolutely. Okay, so Shifty Chef gives his opening statement a couple of, I don't know, 10 days ago, maybe. And he lies like a dog about what was said on this phone call, okay? Of course, the TV cameras are there. A lot of people have not have not read the transcript. Okay? Afterwards, he even met he lies. He said it was parody. Everybody knew it was parody. Well, no, not the people that haven't read it that are sitting at home in their jammies. Right. They also might be voters. Okay? Right. So yesterday, Nancy is on uh, Good Morning America with George Stephanopoulos, who is a Clinton guy. I mean, he's a lefty, lefty, left. Right. And, you know, I think George said something to the effect, well, Nancy, why did Schiff get up there and lie? You know, and make those things up. She said, he didn't. <laughs> now, this has been talked about for two weeks. Oh, now, when wow. I know something, even if I don't want to know it, I can't unknow it. Right. So either she's got dementia, she's drinking, or she's a liar. I'd say all of those, all of the so, above. <laughs> okay, so why isn't there a 25th Amendment for Speaker of the House? Yeah, there should be. Absolutely. Okay. Now, speaking of that, yesterday they started in on Vice President Pence. Okay, now remember, if you impeach Trump... And you impeach his VP because you say his VP knew. And like I said, the threshold is pretty low. Guess who's president? Nancy! Oh. Now, nothing. Oh I'll be God. up there moving in with you in Canada. <laughs> oh, my. What I mean, a horrible thought that is. So oh. it just keeps getting crazier and crazier. And, okay, so I have to throw this in because this is a side note. That is really, it, it, it seems like I'm going off topic, but I really don't think so. So, Fox News is ahead of everybody, right? Right. I mean, uh, cable news, nobody's holding a candle to them, right? Right. And you would think that they would be happy with that. Well, when Paul Ryan left the Congress, Right. He went to work for Fox and is on the board of directors with, um, along with uh, Rupert Murdoch's kids. Okay. And their spouses. 
Well, he wants Fox to go never Trump. So Trump doesn't win. <laughs> wow. Among other things. And now you have got um, Hannity threatening to leave. Wow. You've got others waiting out there to make Newsmax or One America the next Fox. And the, I mean, I'm talking guys with money. Right. So if you watch Fox, they are starting to turn left. Why would you want to go into the drainage ditch with the guys that you're beating the hell out of? Yeah, I don't know. That that you is. Don't uh, like to be on top. And you know they started this Fox Nation thing, and you have to subscribe to it online, right? And pay some more money. Now you got to remember that Fox is a cable channel, so you're paying for it anyway. So and and when you, they talk about it on their shows and stuff, you know, they advertise Fox Nation. Well, that's where we show the really good stuff. Are right. you shitting me? <laughs> Yeah. You're paying over here, and you're not giving us the really good stuff? Yeah, exactly. Wow. You know, I'm offended by that. Yeah, well, they're double-tapping at the at the till, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, you pay for cable, you expect to get the top news, right? Wow. Well, I, yeah, I used to be able to believe that. You know, now I, I don't know where to believe. But I, I will tell you what. When the president or the Congress or the United States taxpayers pays money to somebody, I damn well think that we should be able to expect something in return. And you can call it bribery, pay to play. I, I don't know. I, I really don't think it necessarily falls into that when you've got a sitting president asking someone to look into corruption. Right. And saying, you know, we got a little check over here. He gave them the check. He gave it to him on time. So he really didn't do that. But I say, even if he did, more power to him. You know, you can't just have money handed to you. Yeah. you got to do something. You know? That's like, you know, I, I guess that people can just go to work and sit down and say, you know, boss, you've got to pay me anyway. <laughs> you can't be bright. You know, you can't be making me do something that's like bribery or something right saying you'll give me money to do work that that's just you know jeez that makes no sense it, no. it really makes no sense i know that in canada i know that um you've talked about you know um trudeau writing out checks to everybody and oh yeah you know, um, you know, wearing all that blackface makeup. Or, yeah, how about you know, that, huh? You know, what a hypocrite. What if uh, Trump uh, um, had some photos or videos surface with him wearing blackface? How do you think that would go? Well, he just wears the Tito dust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's only offending that little tiger on his You know, he would be stoned to death. I, I honestly think someone would stone him. Yeah, so th this is a, a, you know, we just said it earlier that uh, there's this double standard with the law that, uh, you know, all the corruption that Trudeau has um, allegedly brought uh, to Canadians, uh, he is blocked at every avenue from the RCMP uh, investigating. So recently, Andrew Scheer, uh, who is a progressive conservative leader, um, and his strongest component, uh, opponent um, said that if he gets elected, uh, he will remove all those blocks so that the RCMP can fully investigate uh, the corruption that has been taking place the last four years. Oh, my gosh. Holy moly. That, that's big. Yeah, it is big. And, uh, you know, the guy yeah. just uh, honestly, Trudeau just thinks he is above the law, as you can see in those videos. I mean, and, and it wasn't once. It was three or four times that, <laughs> that he wore blackface. And he didn't know it was wrong when he was 29. Are you kidding me? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, are you kidding me? I mean, did it not just feel a little dirty to do it? I mean... I mean, I don't know. You know, I honestly don't think it's the worst thing somebody could have done, but if you've done it in the last couple of three decades, you know, especially the last couple of decades, 
you know it's wrong. Right. And, well, you, tr- you know, it really is. I mean, Trudeau and the Liberals have given over a billion dollars to the CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Company, and 600 million to other media outlets. So when the blackface photos um, surfaced, most of the multi-stream media attacked the guy that um, provided the photos and video. And they shamed him. They basically doxed him, which is um, online, posting stuff online with his address and things like that so people yeah. can harass him. And that's exactly yeah. what they and did. It's very scary. They went I, to the I, guy's I, house. Yeah. It's such a serious crime to dox somebody. Yes, and he should be suing the CBC for that. If I was him, I'd be suing them for for doxing him and publicly Absolutely, outing him. Absolutely, because um, you know that that's happened to a lot of people. Um, um, Dana Loesch, uh, she's one of those NRA people and a radio host, and I, I'm not. She's not my favorite, but regardless. Somebody docks her, she had to move her whole family. Right, right. Because, I mean, it was becoming unsafe for her children. Yeah. I mean, you know, think about what you're doing. That's just horrible because there are crazy nuts out there that yeah. will kill or hurt somebody. You bet. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it, it's a little worrying because some people like, uh, you know, I follow social media rather closely. Some people can uh, are still big Trudeau fans, and I just don't get it. I don't understand it. Uh, mostly, they're in denial. Well, they liked him in the beginning, and then they're in denial that he's not what they thought they were. I thought he was right. And uh, what was he a drama teacher? So, yeah, I, I don't know what disturbs me more: his Halloween choice of costumes, or the fact that he wears the the Prime Minister of Canada costume. I think that upsets me even more. <laughs> because oh it, my gosh. Yeah, it, it, that honestly, India outfit. Yeah, that was a, a you know, that was just the tip of the iceberg there because he met with uh, known terrorists on that uh, vacation. It was, yeah. yeah, he flew in an Indian chef from Canada to India. <laughs> yeah. Is he afraid somebody's going to poison him? I I don't know. I, I don't even... I can't fathom I, what, I mean, what he's I thinking was. I can almost see him being that paranoid. Yeah. And and lately it's all he about the environment, the too. the secret side of Trudeau? Because this public persona suggests that the, the personal, private Trudeau is weird. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I can't remember her name. The Canadian tennis um, star that won the U.S. Open recently. He met with her and he was like uh, doing a Joe Biden all over this poor girl. <gasps> really? I missed that. <clears throat> yeah, it, it was very creepy. Um, mm. Yeah, it's getting ugly here. There's a lot of mudslinging. I mean, they're they're trying their best to discredit uh, Andrew Scheer. Um, and uh, lately it was... Uh, beginning of the week was oh he wasn't an insurance broker when he worked in insurance <laughs> okay that that is probably yeah, the equivalent that's... of having him not return a library book when he was eight you know yeah. that they doesn't matter him in the United States for that and then the, the <laughs> <laughs> true <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyways yeah. Yeah, uh, yesterday it came out that he was actually he's actually a dual citizen. He's a uh, he's got his uh, U.S. citizenship as well. And uh, when cool. that came out, they they th- yeah everybody went cool, and yeah. uh, they thought that people would be oh he's not Canadian then and uh, yeah that didn't happen. So they're no, they're no, just it wouldn't. they're pulling yeah. out uh, anything and everything they can. Um, l- lately, it's been the environment as well. Um, Trudeau marching in a uh, climate emergency march. You know, uh, okay. Um, hope you made your signs big enough for the sun <laughs> to see them. Yeah. You know, uh, why is he marching? He's the leader of the country. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, it's, and here's the hypocritical side of the guy, too. On the campaign trail, he's got not one, but two jets. So, oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. He travels with two jets. Me. Yeah. So, um, Is one that, like a diversion? No, no, it's full of media <laughs> personnel that oh, is, and uh, his cook. you know, He's yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the, you know, Canadian version of the Secret Service and his entire entourage and on and on, not one jet, but two. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he really cares for the climate, um, yeah. especially flying the, the Canadian jet to the West Coast so he can go surfing every month. So it, it, it's ridiculous. Some of these trips that he's taken in the past um, have cost well over $500,000. Wow. Yeah. So they, he likes to eat and drink on that plane and not um, fast food or, uh, you know, your your uh, bottom shelf stuff. It's top shelf well, for that and guy. Well, you've got to admit that uh, Trump does eat cheaply. I mean, he likes the burgers. Yeah. He likes... Wendy's and Chick Fil A, and and you know everybody's wondering why he doesn't have hardening of the arteries, but apparently he doesn't. But it's cheap for us. If we yeah. have to buy him a burger. I don't mind that. Plus, he's not taking a wage either. No, he's not. He's he's giving it away. Well, they make him take it. He has to give it away. Right. Um, well, he doesn't have to give it away, but he does. Right. But. Um, and he gives it to uh, you know a different cause every border. Good, so. good. That that shows you right there that he's in it for the job and not the money. And yeah, I do believe he cares about the people. You know, right? He he sometimes does some things that you're going, oh, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know. And he certainly had lifestyle choices that you know. Maybe I wouldn't make. Well, or, he is a bit or, narcissistic. I, I, you know, I, I've made bad choices in my life, too. Yeah. So, you know, I, I honestly think if you can sit on a, a glass throne, more power to you. Yeah. yeah but most exactly. of us cannot. No. No, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen up here in Canada. Um, hopefully Trudeau gets ousted and uh, has to pay for some of the corruption that he's done to this country in the last four years. That's what I'd like to see. Whether well, it will go that way, so. I don't know. In the meantime, uh, you know, anybody wants a blackface photo of Trudeau, just shoot your address in the, co- in the, the comments and I'll send you one. We have lots. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, which, which pose do you prefer? Because there's multiple poses. Well, I, I like the video with him uh, uh, where he actually colored his arms and his legs too. That, oh that, my that, gosh. That one I don't was, think I've seen that one. That one came out. Uh, that was one of the latest ones. Oh, oh I haven't seen that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's very funny because the the photos surfaced through the U.S. media. <laughs> Because in Canada, I guess nobody would print those photos. So, well, are they afraid to? Um, they're paid well by the Liberal Party. Why would they, uh, you know, oh, okay. shoot okay. their cow? You, <laughs> you know, I get it. Yeah. yeah. So, it, it, you know, we we do have time to thank uh, for for you know popping the the big uh-oh. uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's going to get interesting. You have to agree that uh, we're in for a couple good weeks of politics. Absolutely, you know, it, 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 it's a great show. I mean, popcorn sales are up. <laughs> you know, while we're talking popcorn, I would like to plug um, a new children's book series, Oliver Doodle's Tales. Look for it on Amazon. Especially if you want kids to learn coping skills. Awesome. Um, it's a what we call a not so PC children's book series, meaning that um, Oliver gets punished sometimes. <laughs> he runs into situations that he must learn to cope. Um, so um, if you're worried about raising snowflakes, this is great books. Awesome. For that. Um, uh, 
let's see, by next week, there will be at least two of the books out in the series. So start now. Right on, right on. I uh, I will definitely uh, be checking those out for sure. So, <laughs> yeah. So I guess we can agree that uh, uh, this is going to be a couple uh, interesting weeks. Yep, and we don't always agree, but this has been fun. Thanks yes. for listening. Godspeed, Connor. Godspeed to all of our friends out there. Godspeed, Grace, and everyone, thanks for listening. <laughs>